In this demo, we are going to be showing how to use Transmagic to generate dimensions from a part using our various manual and interactive dimensioning tools. Click Open on the Home tab there in the upper left, and notice here uh, we will, an initial launch, default to the sample files directory on Windows 7 and Vista machines. This is C Users Public Documents. On Windows XP machines, this will be under C Documents and Settings all users and public documents and uh, in Windows XP in order to see the C documents and settings folder you may need to actually uh, go to your folder properties and uh, enable the showing of hidden files. We're going to load a couple files for this example but first off let's load ASUS sample 1. The auto repair wizard is on by default, so that's fine, uh, but I'm going to say don't show this during file loading for this demo, but I will perform the recommended actions. Cut a green light, so that's good. Uh, that is turned off on file load now. In the settings area, home tab of Transmagic, go to the repair tab. You can actually turn that back on anytime you wish. Okay, or you could always just simply run it again on the home tab. But for right now, we just want to do some dimensioning. And what I'm going to do is uh, let's uh, say that all I care about is this file on top. So I want to hide the other data. And we have several options there. So I'm going to show you just a couple of those because it's a, a relevant topic here. Um, the part on top, if I select it, we can see in the assembly browsing, uh, browser, this is the upper bearing housing. So what I can do is just simply hide all the other parts by unchecking them. Let's click show all or option two is I'm going to go to my operations tab or sorry my view tab click on a right side view um, here's my little uh, selection toolbar here you can reposition that anywhere you want I prefer to keep it to the left hand side here there we go let's click the window select you can click and drag all of those lower parts uh, and hide them in two different ways so I can right click and say hide parts or up here on the home tab um, I can say hide selected entities up there also um, but actually what I prefer to do in this case is I'm gonna also uh, have the option to delete these so you can delete files in Transmagic go to the operations tab here and click delete selection so that's you know they just basically got rid of them for this particular task let's go to view ISO and let's generate some dimensions so dimensions are in the operations tab uh, the interactive dimension here is pretty much the simplest tool to use for this task. Uh, we are not trying to be a dimensioning application. This is kind of for information only. So click dimensioning and our interactive dimension and you'll see the controls here on the left. Uh, what this represents here is where initial dimension placement will be created. So XYZ referencing this little uh, uh, axis in the lower left hand corner which you can turn on and off by the way but so uh, they're going to be spaced out in this orientation at a half an inch um, I happen to know that this part um, is a little larger so I'm going to change this to two inches and hit apply and really I think what you'll learn is you don't really uh, you may not use this a lot I personally don't but uh, we need to show how to use it here so let's do a vertex to vertex dimension notice when interactive dimension is uh, enabled uh, as your mouse moves over different uh, elements of the file geometry elements uh, things highlight. So here I have a vertex highlight, face highlight. Uh, the color of this part you can't really see as well, but I have, uh, you'll see the edges highlight as well. It's a lot easier in uh, wireframe mode, which we'll show in a second here. But anyways, to show the orientation, we want to go in this orientation, uh, dimension spaced out two inches, and we've already hit apply, and we're going to do a vertex to vertex. So what you do is you simply click on the first vertex with your left mouse button, drag it, and notice as you run across different vertices, um, they are uh, highlighted and your leader arrow there will uh, uh, snap to those. So let's select this bottom one here. And so that is again spaced out at 10.2, just so you can see. Let's uh, turn this to 1, hit apply, and we'll do another uh, vertex dimension here. Vertex to vertex, and notice how at uh, one uh, inch is uh, spaced out evenly. So, if you're trying to get some decent output, you may use that, but you can actually, when you're in the interactive dimensioning mode, go and uh, click and drag these dimensions around, anyways. And so, um, again, those are just basically for uh, initial placement, these uh, orientation uh, directions here. So, another uh, feature that we have is to clear previous dimensions. 
So if you turn that on, and let's create a new one, we'll just do another vertex to vertex here. Let's go snap out to there. Notice how all previous dimensions were cleared, and uh, that'll just continue on. So other dimensioning behaviors, though, let's go to View tab. Over here, we have wireframe mode. This is often easier for uh, dimensioning. And because we have sort of a lighter color uh, part here, maybe we want a higher contrast environment. So you can easily change your window colors. So let's just go straight uh, black, you know, uh, kind of old school there. Um, and notice how uh, you have a vertex button. You can turn vertices on and off here. Actually, I'm going to change the bottom color to something a little. Let's see. We'll go white now. There we go. Just want a little gradient in there. Uh, now, on Operations tab, when we have Interactive Dimension enabled, notice as we uh, roll over parts here, as such as an edge, a straight edge, if you just click on it, will create a vertex-to-vertex -vertex dimension. And uh, we have our orientation here. <clears throat> there we go. And uh, if you create a dimension between two edges, You'll have an uh, option to go distance, which will give you the minimum distance dimension. So let's do that. So that's the minimum distance between those two vertices. Uh, or you could also do a, an angular dimension, which would give you the angle between those two dimensions. If you select a radius edge, um, if it's a true radius, then you'll see a radius dimension. Many different file types, maybe such as an IGIS, etc., will actually have, um, it'll look like a radius, but it will not be a radius. It'll be a, a spline surface, which doesn't include those types of uh, analytic definitions. Uh, the repair tools will actually cure those and simplify that geometry to be a radius, so um, you can take a look at those later. Um, but if you do select radius dimensions, again, it will create uh, radius dimensions and notice how we're uh, clearing the previous dimensions. Here's another one. If you select a radius and then go and select another radius uh, edge, you'll have another option dialog pop up. And this is asking, you know, where do you want this dimension to be? Do you want a center to center, a tangent to center, tangent to tangent, etc.? Center to center being the most common, we'll default to that. And so that is, you know, the center distance between these two arcs. And so you have uh, edges, you have vertices, and the edges will change based on the selection type. So radius, it could even be an ellipse, it'll show a major and minor um, dimension. Let's load up a, another part here. We're going to reload this one actually and show you a couple other dimension types. There we go, and in this case we're going to go to our view tab and hide all of the middle parts home and select hide. There we go. ISO again. The other dimensions you can create are face-to-face. Uh, -face. So operations tab, let's turn on interactive dimension again. Let's say we want to measure from this top face to this top face. And so the face-to-face -face dimension is handy in that context. What if we wanted an overall dimension though? And we wanted to measure from this top face uh, all the way to the bottom top face here or the bottom face here rather. What you need to do there is create a manual dimension. That's what this is for. And so first off, you have to select the, the faces that you want to dimension. So uh, click on your single select button here. And if you select on the pull down, you, have a, uh, uh, you can filter for different things. And in this case, we're going to say face level selection. So click the top face. And while leaving that selected, Let's click our rotate button, rotate it all the way around, click our single select again, which will still be on this face level filter, um, and while holding the control key down, select the bottom face. And so if we rotate around again, you'll notice that both faces are selected, and you create a manual dimension. So that's how you go uh, and create the overall dimensions uh, in a case like this. Uh, we also have another tool which is a, a sort of dimensioning style capability. Let's show everything. And what if we want the actual overalls of the entire assembly? What you can do is we need to turn off our face level selection and go back to body. There you go. And we select all, operations. Notice we have an option for a bounding box. That will actually create a minimum dimension box that covers all of the extents of that particular part. And so here, 
we have a top level um, dimension of 15.43 by 17 by 20. To get rid of this box, simply uh, click your single select button, select the box, and on the operations tab you can either click de sele delete selection or you can simply click delete on your keyboard, which is often easier. Go back over to our view. Another type of dimension switch to a front view again let's click our window select here uh, again hide everything except the top and the bottom go to ISO operations tab let's get rid of these two dimensions that's what these uh, annotation uh, delete annotation are for so you simply highlight this and anything you click on dimension wise uh, you'll get rid of there we go and you can also do a body to body dimension so let's click the top part hold control click the bottom part and if we create a manual dimension since we are in body selection mode now it's going to give us the minimum distance between those two parts um, and that could be any complex shape and you will generate the minimum distance measurement there so let's get rid of that guy uh, how about right click show show all again operations tab now let's create some annotations so annotations are kind of like uh, notes. So we'll say, you know, top part, bead blast. Not sure why you do that, but you get the idea. And what you can do is click and drag, add several different notes, um, and you can take screen capture of, of, of this stuff. If you go to the View tab, at any time you can click Copy Image, and that will capture uh, an image the exact same size as your uh, dimensioning notes there and so you can paste that into an email paste that into an excel spreadsheet etc go back to operations and one uh, other thing about uh, the annotations tab let me uh, refresh my view is uh, if you select the annotations button here um, and it's active you can actually go back and change the position of other notes if it's not active for example let's just click out here you cannot move these uh, and these are applied to 3D space, you know, so they'll just be moving along with the part. But if you want to go back and move any of those, you can click the Create Annotation, simply select and drag. There we go. We have uh, other types of markup. Now, these are temporary. All of these uh, red line tools are temporary. You can use them to take screen captures. Um, and apply them to the part, but as soon as you rotate this part, they're going to go away. Uh, same with the text markup, you can type in temporary notes here in space, but as soon as you rotate the part, they will go away. However, there is a way to keep those. Um, if only temporary, maybe you're uh, demonstrating to a superior or someone else uh, features of the part here, and you want to keep these temporarily at least, so let's uh, create a couple of those do some circles here and some text okay go to the view tab and if you hold down shift and then click on snapshot one that will actually save that view so now if we uh, rotate around you know they've disappeared like we would expect however now that we've already set that view by holding shift and clicking the button now if we just go back and click the button that all those notes uh, are reapplied and uh, get uh, displayed back in that orientation. And let's, uh, you know, the other snapshot buttons work in much the same way. We'll again just create some temporary uh, nonsense notes here. Go to the View tab, hold Shift, click Snapshot 2. Now if we rotate, they disappear. However, however if I click Snapshot 1, we come back to the first set saved view. Snapshot 2, come back to the second set saved view. And uh, of course we have a Snapshot 3 there as well. So that is uh, the ability to save the temporary red lines if you want. Uh, finally, since we're dealing mainly with the annotations and dimensions bar here, we see that we have one more icon here that is grayed out that stands for, uh, PMI stands for Product Manufacturing Information. This particular part does not have any, but we're going to load one up. First off though, Let's close this dock. You have to go to the settings, general tab, and enable PMI translation. So um, only certain configurations of Transmagic have the ability to 
read and visualize PMI information. And this information is uh, supported for CATIA v5, Pro Engineer, and UG. So let's click OK. And if you go to our sample files, let's load up v5, sample 1. This particular part actually has PMI information attached to it. And you'll see us building PMI annotations if it does. And so dimensioning uh, is also available uh, sort of in this form, in which case uh, the dimensioning already existed on the part. And so you can add more to this, um, or you can simply just view this information. If we go back over to our operations tab, notice how PMI is highlighted now because it's turned on. To turn it off, just simply click the button and it goes away, turn it back on, etc. And so uh, with that, I think that concludes the dimensioning uh, demonstration. Thanks for watching.